talking about the body of Christ in our church, uh, about the body parts. Now, all our body parts are important. When our hands and our feet, they do different things, but they're all important. So that's kind of like being on a team. You know, our impact team's coming today. They're going to be singing, and some are going to be speaking, and some are probably going to be praying for those. And see, they all have different things that they do, but they're very important. And in the scripture, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're talking about being a part of the body of Christ, being the team of Christ. And I thought it was real interesting. It says that for the body is one and have many members, just like the team. It's not just a one-man show. It takes everybody working together. But when we're thinking about being on God's team, that's what I want you to remember. It takes all of us working together. And um, in verse 12, it says, for we are one and have many members. But down in verse 23, it says, and those members of the body, which we, some, some of us think may be less honorable, like those guys in the backfield, sometimes they just stand up and the ball never get to them. But sometimes the ball does. And it takes them to get the ball back up the front. And it says, having given more abundant honor to the part that lacks. So as a team of us being on God's team, don't ever discount somebody's importance to God. Now I'm going to put somebody else on the spot. Mr. Perry, can you stand up for me? <coughs> now, we all love preacher Jimmy. We know he's important to the church. But I think this man right here needs to know how important he is to the church. Mr. Harris, one of those quiet, quiet men. You never hear fuss. You never hear complaints. But he'll stay out here at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock if we're out here and he'll go around this church and he'll make sure our doors are locked, the lights are turned off, and that this church is taken care of. And I thank you, Mr. K, for that, because that's an important part.
I pray that each and every one of us in this body, <coughs> each one of these members of this yeah. church, Lord, that we come to know you, that we come to know our full potential, that we learn and grow um, the way you want us to learn. Help us to uh, be there for each other and ultimately be there for you, Lord. Yes. Just help us to focus in on you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
this church, this one body, is that illustration with the baseball team was given earlier. We all play our roles. We all have one purpose, and that's to glorify God. Amen. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about how we do that. If you open your scriptures, uh, we'll be in Matthew chapter 22. We'll be looking at verses 34 through 40. Uh, I'll give you a second thought that. Uh, just a little background information about what's going on. Um, Jesus had just left the Sadducees in silence them because they thought they were interpreting Scripture the right way. When in reality, they were being heretics. Jesus tells them the truth, and they have nothing left to say. Well, so the Pharisees, they attempt to try to prove Jesus wrong. It doesn't turn out so well. Jesus silences them as well in this passage. Uh, verse 34 in Matthew chapter 22 says, When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together at the same place. One of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test Jesus. He said, Teacher, which command of the law is the greatest? And Jesus replied to him, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second one is much like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All of the law and all of the prophets depend on these two commands. Jesus says, Love your Lord your God. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love others as yourself. We should have one heart to do these things. As one church body with all of its members to do this. I want to thank you first for letting us be here and letting me bring the gospel to you today. There are many ways that we go in this life loving God. Not all of them are the best, but we are flawed people. One way that we talk to God, one way that we show our love for God, is by praying to Him. And we pray to God, but sometimes we don't listen to what He has to say back to us. Prayer isn't a one-way street. We don't just talk at God. We're talking to God. We have to wait on His response. Sometimes it's a yes or no answer, and we'll know. Other times it's maybe you should wait and ask later. Sometimes it's you do it. Sometimes God tells us, hey, you take care of it. Oh, yeah, God. We don't always do that. But we're called to love God. And in order to do that, we have to talk to Him. We have to listen to what He has to say. How many of you uh, people in here have friends, girlfriend, <laughs> girlfriends, husband, wives? It doesn't show them that you love them very much if you never talk to them or listen to them, does it? Amen. Same thing with God, only so much bigger because He is so much bigger than anyone in here. Amen. That's just how it is. Call the love of God. Called to pray to God. We're also called to know His scriptures. His scriptures, although they're written by men, they're inspired by God. Amen. There's nothing in the scripture that didn't come directly from God. If we don't know it, how can we say we love Him? This right here, this book, it's not just a book. It's the Word of God written into an example for our lives. Amen. Simple. Now, we pray to God, we read what He has to teach us, and then we just go about our lives, right? That's how it works? No. You have to live like it. You can't just know it. You can't just talk to God. You have to live as if you do those things. Amen. So many times in our lives, so many people that we know, sometimes it's ourselves, that on Sunday morning, we're in this church, we're reading our Bible, we're praising Jesus, lifting our hands to the Lord, and later in the week, we're back in the same sin that we've been. Come on. So many times. Now, I don't mean to get so heavy on you early, but hey, that's the truth of the matter. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Right? We have to live our lives the way that Christ lived his. Christ not only came to die for our sins, but came to be the example for the way that we should live our lives. You know what the word Christians means? It literally means little Christs. We're going to call ourselves Christians, yet we don't act like Christ. What are we doing? What are we doing? Live like Christ. Talk to God. Know the scriptures. That's the loving God part. But today I want to talk a lot more about the loving others inside of this passage of scripture. A lot of times people forget about this second part of scripture where he says, love your neighbor as yourself. It's very important. You can't say that you love God if you don't love other people. 
Amen. You can't love other people if you don't first love God. It's not true love if it's not Christ centered. And that's the truth. <laughs> Loving others. Now, we can say, oh, yeah, I love that person. I've known him my whole life. They mean a lot. Well, you know what? I've known chocolate chip cookies my whole life and I love them. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. You know. You got it. I know. It's not the same thing. Now, how do we love others? Do we love others just by, you know, just always saying, hey, I love you? You know what? Words don't mean anything. I can say I'm a big green monster right now. It doesn't make me a big green monster. Mm -hmm. I can say I love you. It doesn't mean I love you. I've got to show it with my actions. Amen. I have to believe it. Because I have to have Jesus at the center of that love. Here's some examples of ways you can love people. Number one, actually do show that emotion that you care about. That's the most simple worldly way to say it. But there's a lot more to it. How about pray for these people? Like today, we had so many prayer requests throughout this congregation. And that's awesome. That shows that we have in Dogwood Hill, in this place in the north side of Carolina, there are people who care about other people, who love other people. And that's awesome. There's a lot of church bodies who don't have that kind of love. And I like what I saw this morning out of that. Be thankful for that love that you have. Now, more than just praying for people, you have to actually have action behind it. So I'm going to give you an example. I want you to think about this. Imagine a kid, a little kid, probably eight years old, just walking down the street. It's pouring down rain. He's 10 miles from his home. He's got to walk all the way home. 40 degrees outside, so he's cold. He has nothing. Someone drives up in a car, rolls down the window, says, do you need a ride? Home. What's the little kid going do? He's like, yeah, of course I need a ride. Yeah. But as he starts to walk with the car, the driver starts to roll up the window and says, I'll pray that a ride's coming for you. And he drives off. Wow. Prayer can be powerful, but you don't see more powerful. Prayer with action. You pray for something to happen and you don't even give any effort to do anything, then what are you praying for? That's why this world hunger offering is so important. You can pray for people who don't have food to eat all you want. And that's good. But giving them food, they can eat. You pray for them, maybe, maybe God will use someone to bring them food. Or maybe He's trying to get you to do it and you're just not doing it. Love people by proving it with your actions. Prove it with your actions. People have physical needs. Not just people in other countries, not just people in big cities. There's people around here that have physical needs. Amen. There's people in this country all over that don't have enough food to eat or don't have enough food to feed their children. They don't have clothes to give their children. The children have to wear the same clothes at school every day. They get picked on at school because they smell funny. All of us have abundance. Why can't we help them? Let's show them love. By helping by serving God's people. <clears throat> they need food. They need shelter. They also need love. Show them love. Be there for them. If someone is going through a hard time in their life, don't just be like, okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you. Know, things get better and leave it at that. No, pray with them. Praying with someone is a lot more powerful than praying for them. Amen. Because not only do you get the prayer right, they know that you would generally care for them and are there for them whenever they need it. Come on. God is with good intentions. God is with good intentions. They need love. They need emotional help. They need emotional support. They need those physical needs of the food yes. that we're talking about. But there's more so than that. Sometimes even more important than all those things. They need spiritual help. Amen. So many people in this life, <clears throat> maybe even someone in here, that just isn't on the right page with Jesus. There's people that you know, everyone in this room knows someone Come on. that does not have that relationship with Christ. Amen. And that's a fact. You can say you don't, but you're lying to yourself and you're lying to God and you're lying to everyone around you. I want you to think about that. <clears throat> just think about it right now. Do you understand that a relationship with Jesus Christ is what gets you to heaven? You also understand that the lack of a relationship with Jesus Christ sends you to hell. Come on. 
How much does it show that we love someone or really don't love someone when we know they're going to hell and we do nothing about it? So many times we just pass by someone. Whether it's, oh, I don't really know him, I don't want to talk to him, or I'll just do it again later. You know what? You might not get later. You never know when your last breath on this earth will be. You never know when that person's last breath on this earth will be. You never know when that person's going to move away and you'll never see them again. You will never know. Show love for people by actually loving them. It doesn't show a whole lot of love to not do anything for people. People have some physical needs. We don't provide for them. doesn't show them any love. People have emotional needs. We don't support them. We're not there for them. We don't pray for them. It doesn't show them any love. Come on. There's people with spiritual needs that we do nothing about. Sometimes it's not even so much as, as they don't know Jesus. Maybe they're just struggling with a particular sin. Come on. Maybe you know about it. Come on. Yeah, you do nothing to be there for them. You, you do nothing to help keep them accountable. You don't give them scriptures. You don't even pray for them. I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. Why? How can we claim to be little Christians? Or little Christ Christians? How can we claim to be that? And then not live like Christ? Come on. There you go. I challenge all of you today. Shed the old view that says, you know, I'll just just kind of tiptoe through this Christian wall. Get rid of that. Actually be like Christ. Because that's what we're called to do. Yeah. I want to give you an illustration of, of a spiritual need. There was a guy who uh, he grew up not a great home life. His parents, they, they weren't bad to him, but they never really did much for him. He never felt a whole lot of love at home. Never went to church, so he didn't really know anything about Jesus. Came up through middle school and high school as a pretty good athlete. So he started to get people to recognize him for that. Sports became his idol, it was the only thing he lived for. But, power of Christ. And I'll tell you what, this guy, sophomore in high school, he'd go out and he'd party all the time. Not even always on the weekend, sometimes in the middle of school, skip go party, go get drunk with older people, go do drugs with older people, skip class, go do inappropriate things with girls all the time. All the time. Thought nothing about it. But because one person loved him, his best friend loved him, she came to him and said, You're going to hell. He said, I don't mean to be so upfront. But the life you're living will send you to hell. And it broke him that day. It broke him that day. He goes, and he finally accepts a call to ministry the following year. Glory to God. Later on the next year, when sports started creeping up to be an idol again, he took it from him through injury. And today he's standing in a pulpit right now. I lived my life as far away from Jesus as humanly possible. But because one person showed me that they loved me and cared enough about my eternity to tell me up front, listen, the way you're living is not going to get you to heaven. Because someone cared about me and loved me, because she loved Jesus, now I know that in all eternity I'll be forever with my Savior. Boy, if I would have died before that day, before Taylor came to me and just laid spiritual truth in my life, I'd be burning forever. But because she loved me, because she loved Jesus, my eternity has changed forever. Amen. That could be anyone you know. That could be anyone you know. Show them that love. Change their life. God is the author of salvation, Amen. but He uses us God breaks hearts and rebuilds them. But he uses us as instruments to do so. Allow him to do it. Don't sit back and just think, oh, someone else will take care of that. Or I'll take care of it later. Be the change you want to see. Love other people because you love God. You say you love God and you do nothing for other people. You're lying. Don't truly love God. 
You say you love other people, but you don't have a relationship with God. You're lying again. You can't truly really love someone unless you love God enough to give him to them. If you love Jesus, you'll be so excited about what he did for you that you can't keep quiet. Glory to God. There's those around you who don't even know anything in the scripture. In Acts chapter 8, Philip is going from Jerusalem to Gaza. And he sees a man on the side of the road. It's an Ethiopian man. He's reading the scriptures. And he stops and he talks to him. He says, what are you reading? He says, I'm reading from the prophet Isaiah. If any of you know anything about the prophet Isaiah, he prophesied. And a lot of it was hard to interpret, hard to understand. So Philip asks him, he says, do you know what you're reading? The Ethiopian man goes, no, I don't. How can I know unless someone tells me? Come on. How can lost people know anything about Jesus or what he teaches unless we tell them? Right. Okay. How can they know unless we show them who Jesus is? They can't. If no one ever shares Jesus with a lost person, they're not just going to find him. Amen. We are the instruments that God uses. Praise just like how Josh uses a guitar as an instrument. He can't make those noises without that guitar. God uses us to bring salvation to his people. If that instrument's messed up or doesn't want to listen, you don't get the same result. If we don't want to listen to what God's commanding us to do, it can literally be everything for us. It can be way more than just life or death. It's eternal life with Jesus or eternal life with burning. <coughs> Hell's a real place, guys. Yeah. Very real place. Amen. Everything in Scripture where they talk about how bad it is, that's just man's words for us. It's so much worse than that. And everything about heaven is so much greater. Yeah. How important should it be for us that no one go to hell and that everyone go to heaven? How important should it be for us to make sure that we do everything we can to show that we love people enough to keep them from having to go to hell. I'll give you a quote. It's from a man named Charles Spurgeon, a great theologian of all time. Spurgeon said, if sinners must be damned, then let them leap into hell over our dead bodies. Lord, if people must go to hell, Make sure we are doing everything we can to keep it from happening. People go to hell every day. And we do nothing. I'm just as guilty as anyone in this room. We know this, yet we still do nothing. Why? I challenge everyone in this room, as well as myself. Don't do nothing. Love people. Amen. Love people enough to give them Jesus. Love people enough to know that if they're going to hell and they're going to suffer eternally, that you might be able to change that. Give them Jesus. Give them eternal perfection.
lives for the glory of God. Amen, first off. Praise God. But also, don't forget, it's also your job to keep them accountable and pray for them. Don't just sit back and be like, okay, I've got everything good to go. I'm ready. I've got it good. I'm, I'm the man. Don't think like that. Because you're just as unworthy as anyone else in here. Because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah. Right? No matter how much you think you're okay, you're not. Come you on, need Jesus on. just as much as anyone else. Yeah. Do your part. Be in prayer for these people. Love these people by helping them and serving them. I'm going to finish. I'm going to conclude with a short time of prayer. Josh is going to play this a little, little background as we have a time of invitation. If God is speaking to you, whether it's in form in terms of coming to know Him, whether it's having your first time relationship with Him, or if it's repenting of a certain sin, yes. or if it's just finally realizing, you know what, I need to be more missional and evangelical. I need to be out there spreading the good news. Whatever it is. With the altar's open. Yes. If you don't want to come to the altar, your seat's open too. You can pray anywhere. Just call out the God. I'll pray. Dear yeah. Heavenly Father, I just I thank you so much for, for just your glory. I thank you for the ability we have in this country to come and worship you freely. I just ask that in all these hearts in this room, that if you're speaking to anyone, that they will not close off their heart, that they will leave it open, and that you, they will allow you to break them from the inside out, so that you may transform their life in every way. God, in this time of invitation, there's anyone who does not know you. There is, there is someone who has never accepted you as the Lord of their life fully and completely. I pray that you break them and in, enter their lives and transform them forever. God, I just ask that you in this congregation to be full. This church loves each other. But I want to see even more. I think you want to see even more. You want to see them love everyone in the community and the world. God, I pray that you break each one of them for these things. That seems like you said. If there's anyone here, if there's anyone here who needs to come talk to me, Talk to the preacher, talk to God, feel free. Don't miss the chance to talk to God. You never know if you're having a moment. People are still coming. As you pray, people are still coming.
I was in a hurry. I'm getting faithful about it. Just didn't have time. And I was sad to think. As when Kevin said, I may never see them again. Or they may never see me if I made an eternal decision for them. None perfect is what the brother says. And it's all praying. Almighty God is many about their heads here at the altar. And Lord, these are about their heads at their seat. God is this dear brother this morning that has spoken the word of God to us. Lord, from your very throne room, as he told us the two most important commandments in your word, to love you first, God. To be obedient unto you first, God. And then he said in this second one more that we are to love our brother as we, or our neighbor as we love ourselves. That is, God, you want us to love everybody. Lord, we live such a divided society. We're divided by so many things. And God, you never intended it to be like that. This is man's mistake. God, you designed us to live together peaceably, to love one another, and to be a part of one another's lives. Sometimes people, Lord, get in a great state of depression, and they don't love themselves, nor that they want anyone else to be in their life. God, this is dangerous. None of us can stand alone. Almighty God, I pray today that you would help us to be the instruments to your glory.